On this episode of Tested, brought to you by American Collectors Insurance, we have my favorite muscle car of all time, the second generation Dodge Charger. that is presented by American Collectors Insurance. Well, people ask me, Mike, where is your happy place? Well, this is it. It's behind the wheel of a second generation Dodge Charger. I love these cars so much, I own two of them and I can't get enough of them. That's why when we had the opportunity to feature this 1970 Charger 500 SE, I absolutely jumped at the chance. You see, now this car belongs to a very special friend of mine, my friend Basil, and he's had this car for over 20 years. I have lusted after this car, but this is the first time I've actually driven it. And what's interesting is this. You see, my two Chargers are pretty highly modified from suspension to drivetrains to engines to everything else, but this one, this is bone stock. I haven't driven a bone stock charger in probably 15 years, but it makes it the perfect vehicle to feature here on Tested because that's what Tested is all about. Tested is all about showing you exactly what a stock driver feels like. Doesn't matter the year, doesn't matter the model. That's the goal of this show. And on this episode, this Charger 500, <laughs> this is the one. My name is Sawyer Ford, and this is my grandpa, Basil. I've had this Charger 20 years. I originally bought a 1969 Charger and drove the wheels off of it. I love that car, and I vowed, I just was starting out in life, and I was at a new job in the fire department, and I vowed that I'd have another Charger. So 10 years later, I searched the net, I looked all over for it, and I found this Charger. I don't even have to drive it, I can just look at it. When I'm feeling down, I can go in the car and I'm in another world. It's like, I'm back in high school, I feel good, you know? It's really super. My first memory with the Charger is getting picked up at uh, elementary school with my grandpa. Uh, this car would always be the car I wish was getting picked up in because it always made me feel like the coolest kid on campus. And then uh, just really good memories with this car. We'd always go to 7-Eleven right for school, get he would get a jerky stick, I'd get a Slurpee, right. and I'd barely be able to see over the, over the seat, but hot, hot leather seats, uh, <laughs> little metal bits that would burn your skin. <laughs> Always great memories with my grandpa. I haven't, no, I haven't driven this car. It's, uh, I mean, it's, all, it's like kind of like a piece of art, you know? I've always been kind of scared to crash it or do anything like that, and then never really had the chance, so I'm excited to one day eventually. Now, some cool features about the 70 Charger. First off, this is your 70 K-frame. Now, the K-frame on a 70 is different than a 68 and 69 in the fact that the sway bar comes up and actually runs through the K-frame, where on a 68 and a 69, it doesn't. It comes down and under and then goes across. You know, you walk back, you have your oil pan, your you know 727 transmission right here, dual exhaust system. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna be looking at this going, well, what is all that black crap under here? Let me tell you how common that is. That is probably a plastic bag that was run over at some point in its life. I have done this so many times. Now, a little trick to getting this off, if this happens to any car that you have, easy off oven cleaner and a scrub pad. It works miracles. Anyway, walk back. One thing that you do see is the lack of a frame. A Charger is a unibody car, right? So it is going to be uniform front to back. As you can see here, you've got your eight and three quarter rear end and right here, this little tag right here tells you what the rear gear set is. In this case, we have a 323, which when you decode the fender tag is exactly how it came from the factory. What I love about this car is it's a perfect example of a driver. It's been loved, it's been enjoyed, and it's going to continue to be that way for years to come. For those of you in the market for your dream car, make sure you go to Hemmings.com. Check out our make offer pages, our auctions, and of course our online classifieds. Then of course, click the description and it will give you every bit of information you could ever want on your dream car. 
So think of it like this. Back in 1970, you walked into your Dodge dealership and you said, I want the most luxurious charger that I could get. The dealer said, okay, well, we got a Charger 500 special edition. And you said, that's great. What does that mean? And then the dealer looked at you and said, let me run down through your option list. Well, first and foremost, you get these beautiful high back leather seats. Now, the high back leather seats were a first. They didn't come in 68, they didn't come in 69, 70 only, right? Then you have this beautiful wood dash that we have, along with the wood grain center console. Now, if you got the rally cluster, if this was a Charger RT, you would have gotten a tachometer, big speedometer, and then all the ancillary rally gauges. Now, because this is the SE, you basically have a clock and no tick tock tack or tachometer. Um, the other thing is, if you look at the door cards, the door cards, all wood with matte pockets. That was another SE feature. Now this car is very specially optioned, right? We have not only the SE package, but this also has an A-Track player, which is super rare, power windows, okay, which is, are just outstanding. And we also have air conditioning. Now this particular car has a cool story. It was originally from Hawaii, a plantation owner had it and he drove it around the plantation checking it on those people picking pineapples. He passed away, and this Coast Guard captain that was visiting over Hawaii bought this car in an estate sale and had it shipped to Staten Island, where, where he had it in Staten Island in a motor pool for a couple of years, and he got stationed uh, in Puerto Rico with another assignment with the Coast Guard. So I found it and I had my uncle, uh, my uncle had a uh, friend that was in the Coast Guard and he looked at it and that's when I got it. And I love it. I, I, I drove the heck out of it and it's, it's my happy thing. Under the hood, we've got a 6.2 liter, 383 cubic inch big blocks. That means 335 horsepower and 425 pound feet of torque. Now the transmission is Mopar's standard 727 transmission. Now this transmission you would get if you got a big block or uh, a Hemi, right? And the nice part about it is it's one of the most reliable transmissions you can buy. I've got one in my charger. If, if I can't kill one of these, odds are you're not gonna kill it either. Um, they take a ton of power and they're very, very reliable. Now it is a three speed. What does that mean? It means cruising down the highway, you're really gonna have to rely on the rear gear. This particular car has 323 gears in the back. As a cruising gear, it's not bad, but you really wanna go down to like a 276 or a 294 if you're gonna take this thing on the highway. Now, the good part with a 323 is it is a good, it's a nice like medium gear. So like if I lay into the car just a little bit, you roll into it, you still have plenty of torque and it pulls but you really don't want to run it more than say, I don't know, 70 miles an hour on the highway because it just means that your tack is spinning and you really don't want to overtax the motor. I want to give you a little bit of information on the second generation Dodge Chargers that were built from 1968 to 1970. Some quick differences between the 1970, 69, and 68 Chargers. We're gonna go in reverse order for the simple fact that we have a beautiful 1970 Charger 500 right here. Now, on the tail panel on the 1970, as you can see, we have this beautiful chrome trim ring that goes around the tail lights. 1969, you would have tail lights very similar to this, but you would have a big separation right here, no chrome strip. Then in 1970 and 1969, only your reverse lights are down here in the lower balance. Now a 1968 Charger, your tail lights are different. They're round tail lights here and here, and your reverse light is squared right in the center. Just some little differences. Another difference between the 1970, 69, and 68 models are the marker lights. You see, in 1970 and 1969, the marker lights were square both on the rear quarter and in the front, where in 1968, they were round. Another difference is the fuel cap. Now, the fuel cap on a second generation Charger, obviously one of the most iconic parts of the car. However, where it says fuel on the gas cap for the 69 and 70, on 68, it's just a blank plate and it doesn't say a thing. All second gen Chargers from 1968 to 1970 had these beautiful door scallops. However, if you got a Charger RT in 1970, you would have this plastic cover over here and it would simply say RT on it. A little cheesy, but I mean, they wanted to keep it fresh, so there you go. Now we get to the front end. Where 1968 and 69 Chargers were very much the same, things changed for 1970. If you look at this car right here, you can see that the hood is nice and flat. The fenders are nice and flat and there is no overarching arc as in 68, 69. 1970, you were introduced to this big chrome loop bumper, which some people love, some people hate. 
But here's the other part. Underneath where the headlights are, in 68 and 69, they were actually vacuum actuated. So when you hit the switch, they would kind of go up slow and wink at you, where these are electric. So you hit the switch and bam, they pop right up. You know, from a driving perspective, as a stock vehicle, it's very, very cush. Don't think of this in any way, shape, or form as a, as a sports car. Think of it more of just a nice cruiser, a nice GT car. You know, your steering, well, it's a little on the floaty side. You get a little bit of body roll. But this car has, again, it's never been modified, so it's an absolutely beautiful cruiser. And the thing is, everything works beautifully in this car. It's just a prime example. But if I want to go into a corner, you know, if, if we roll into it a little bit, um, you know, you can kind of feel the body roll in this thing. It's not huge, but it's what you should expect if you're going to buy a stock muscle car. And this isn't just a Charger. This is the same as if you go buy a Chevelle or a Monte Carlo or anything like that. But Mopars in particular, they have this Saginaw steering box. It is a little on the sloppy side. And if your shocks are a little worn, yeah, you're going to get some body roll. Like if I go like this, you know, you could kind of see the car moving around. But it's very predictable and they're very easy to drive. The other thing is, oh my God, are they comfortable? Especially when you're equipped with air conditioning. Absolutely fabulous, fabulous runner, driver, and cruiser. Now the cool part is, these are unibody cars. So if you want to turn them into handlers, it's not really that hard. You see, they're torsion bar suspension. And the beauty of torsion bar suspension is that you can literally, with a nice ratchet, go under there and adjust the ride height up or down with just a few cranks of your wrist. The other thing is, if you want to drop the back, some lowering blocks in there, what have you. Now, there are people out there that are going to look at me and be like, you can't modify that car. Don't ever change them from stock. Well, here's the thing, people. You can modify them because if you buy it, it's your car and you can do whatever you want. For a long time, there was the camp where, you know, if it's a stock car, you can't modify it. And, and some of that is true because finding a stock car is getting more and more difficult. This is the perfect example. I mean, this is a car that has never once been modified. It had one repaint about 25 years ago, and that's it. Otherwise, everything is stock, especially under the engine bay. Very, very rare thing. So would you modify this one? I would say no. But if you found one that was you know, in a little state of disrepair, modify away. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. Looking around this car, this is really the only modification that I can see. When I say this, I'm talking about this pistol grip shifter in the place of where the ball automatic shifter should be. You know, the pistol grip didn't come out until 1970. This is kind of a neat piece because it actually has a trigger on it to shift, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, but again, if you wanted a bone stock charger, it would have had a little ball on the top. With agreed value policies, the option of using the repair shop of your choice and variable mileage plans, it is no wonder that American Collectors Insurance has a five-star customer service rating nationwide. To explore all your insurance options, go to AmericanCollectors.com now to speak with one of their wonderful customer service representatives. When you think of muscle cars, everybody thinks superpower. They gotta be these big raw beasts and animals. Here's the thing. This 383 is 335 horsepower and it makes about 425 pound-feet of torque. For a road car, like, even by today's standards, that's quite a bit of power. And this is not a slow car. This car will do zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds and it'll top out at about 135, 140 miles an hour. They have so much torque that what you think is, you know, what you think you might need, odds are you don't. The other part is, it's a 3,600 pound car. It's not that heavy by today's standards. Now let's talk about comfort. As I mentioned earlier, I have not been in a stock Dodge Charger for quite some time. Here's one of the things I'm noticing. I'm a big guy. I'm 6'4", I'm pushing 250 pounds, right? Um, even with the high back sports seats, I'm, I'm a little closer to the wheel than I'd like to be. You know, if you're a big guy or a big woman or just big in general, you can mod this, right? What I did in my cars is I dropped the seat rails, lowered it back. Um, I also put seats that do recline. These seats, the high back buckets, there's one adjustment forward and backwards. There's no recline. With that said, the seating position on a stock seat is not terrible. These seats are actually very comfortable. I would just prefer they move back a little farther. The other thing is, let's talk about field of view. You have a beautifully large windshield. Your windows are very big. You've got your wing mirror or your wing vent, which works beautifully as like 
your mild air conditioning if you don't want to use your air conditioning. It just directs wind right on you. The other thing is, you know, as this is an SE model, it came with this beautiful A-Track stereo. You got four speakers, two in the front, two in the back. Nice sound quality if they're not blown out from being 50 years old. And again, as you have power windows, it doesn't drive like a 54-year-old car. They actually drive fairly modern, believe it or not. Yes, there are things upgrade. Brakes, definitely. Steering, definitely. But it won't cost you that much to do. However, cost. In the last 10 years, B-bodies, Chrysler B-bodies, Chargers especially, they got up there. 20 years ago, you could pick one up for 12 grand, a nice, decent driver. If you're looking for a decent driver now, expect to, you're talking 60 plus. Lastly, I'm going to say this. If you are in the market for one of these cars, buy the best one that you can. Try to find one that's been meticulously maintained. You know, these cars, paperwork has gotten lost over the last 40 years, but find an owner that's knowledgeable. Find somebody that is taking care of the vehicle. Look underneath it, check for rust, check for mechanical oddities that you know don't feel right about the car. And then you have to drive it. The beauty of this car, one of my favorite parts about this car is that it belongs to Basil. And you know what Basil's gonna do? Basil's gonna give it to his grandson, Sawyer. And Sawyer's gonna drive it. And if you stopped and you listened to what Basil had to say, I'll guarantee you one thing, when I'm gone, he'll drive it. For sure, <laughs> drive the wheels off of it. Definitely. Oh, that's what it's all about. I hope he enjoys it. I'm glad to leave something to my grandkids. And this is great. Back yeah, to you. He'll be, to hopefully he'll be picking up his kids from school. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now Sawyer, I know you. I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna teach you how to drive the wheels off this car. Basil, I promise, I'll teach him the right way. He's not gonna crash the car, I promise, okay? But enjoy this. The other part I liked about that is that it's going to the next generation. It's going to the next generation of motorheads. And Sawyer's a kid, he's gonna baby this car, he's gonna enjoy it, and I also think he's gonna drive the wheels off it because as he said, he wants to give it to his grandkids. So guys, thank you for watching another episode of Tested, brought to you by American Collectors Insurance. Basil, thank you for letting us use this wonderful car. And uh, anybody out there, I'm gonna tell you right now, don't wait. If you have the means, buy one of these cars today and I promise you will not regret it. Oh, also like and subscribe to the Hemmings channel because not for nothing, we're kind of awesome. Thanks.